Hi, I'm George Mukarzo, and I'm going to talk about using deep lab cut for automated feature tracking for rat kinematic analysis. But first, as an overview, kinematics is used to study the motion of animals, but tracking limb features has been mostly done in a manual fashion. This can be very labor intensive and very time consuming. Deep lab cut is a deep learning framework that can automatically track features of moving animals. So by using deep lab cut, we can automatically generate 2D coordinates for 3D reconstruction. And then we can take and analyze these 3D data for a kinematic study of spinal cord injury with a human level accuracy. Spinal cord injury research has been showing us some very promising therapeutics. However, to date, it is still unclear what is the main and sole driving factor for recovery on the neuronal level. Gene therapy, like drugs, for example, can allow us to selectively turn on subpopulations of neurons. In our lab, we are studying the effect of turning on large afferent sensory fibers on spinal cord injury recovery. One way to assess spinal cord injury recovery is to compare kinematics of motion capture videos that are taken over different time points after the injury and compare them to a baseline so we can assess how quickly and how efficiently this recovery is happening. However, mocap kinematics can be quite problematic because they've mostly been done manually, which can be very time consuming. It can take a lot of manual input and a lot of supervision. And while some automatic mocap systems have been put in place, they usually use infrared markers. And these can be a problem with rats because they tend to chew the markers off. So by using deep lab cut, which is a new deep learning framework that uses computer vision, we can quickly and automatically track rat features that are moving. And in this case, we are interested in tracking the hind limb joints. So to do so, we took high-speed videos of two groups of rats. One was given the dreads gene therapy and the others were control. We took videos of two different angles. So it would allow us to reconstruct in 3D. And then the videos were taken before an injury, which, consist, which constituted the baseline. And then two, three, four, six, seven, and eight weeks after the injury. Then training models were created in deep lab cut. So by doing that, we extracted frames manually. Then we clicked on hind limb joints that we are interested in for 300 frames gathered for, from four different locomotion events. So a total of 1,200 frames. And we did one training model for each camera angle. Then we grabbed the unlabeled videos, we loaded them through the deep lab cut pipeline, and then we, they were automatically analyzed and they generated 2D coordinates. These coordinates were then processed with our 3D reconstruction software. And then we computed the 3D variations of the hip, knee, and ankle angles on an average stride. When we were trying to account for error, we took the 3D projected data, and then we reprojected it into 2D. And we found that the mean reprojection error was about 7.2 pixels, and the mean interportal was 4.29 pixels, and these were over 1,000 frames, which was very low. And then we found that deep lab cut took about 50 seconds per video on a GPU machine to be tracked. And this is significantly lower than videos that were tracked using manual methods or semi-automatic methods, which took on average 50 minutes per video. And we also found that data generated by deep lab cut could be used with our custom 3D reconstruction software. So as we can see here on the right, this shows us the variation of the 3D computed angles of the ankle, hip, and knee. And we can assess how quickly this recovery happened compared to the blue line, which is the baseline. For future work, because we found that deep lab cut training is really sensitive to light setting changes and to camera angles, we would like to one, expand training data set so we can only have one network that can accurately track videos even with different light settings and different angles. We would also like to create a training data set without having these physical markers, or in our case, the Sharpies on the rat's hind limb joints. So in other words, a markerless training data set. And we would also like to create a training data set where we can track the bones through the skin accurately. And this would help us overcome skin motion artifacts. Thank you for listening. For any questions or comments, please join me on the live Q&A session on Zoom. Thank you and I hope to see you there.